Hi guys, Arte here. So for this video is about the PvP uh, legendary ability Montier list as you guys mentioned last time for my previous video the, for the PvE one, you guys are requesting for the PvP one as well. So today I invited Choni uh, to this video and we have we will have the discussion about the PvP tier list because I'm not really that good in PvP so I think it's better to invite other person to discuss with me as well. So Choni Hey guys, uh, I'm Chani. Uh, you've probably seen me in like the Azura Discord or even RTS Discord. I've been quite active there recently. Although RTS says he's not that good at PvP, uh, he's better than me, but <laughs> it's just uh, we'll, we'll see what we can do for this tier list. Okay, all right, so as like the previous video, so we have the highest priority is the max it, then important, decent, no rush, and waste. So um, don't don't panic if you guys see your PVE expert is at waste here because this video is fully focused on PVP content such as point war, knockout, and warm up match, which is our RTA. Then we don't consider other situation like in PVE situation. So this tier list is purely for PVP. So uh, enjoy the video. So the first expert we'll be looking at is at Yun Chuan. So Yun Chuan, even though it's a multi hitter, uh, it potentially it could counter Anna, but I don't really see a use in PvP content. So in PvP wise, I would not recommend to skill him up. But how do you think, Tony? Yeah, I'd say he's not really that great for PvP. Although he's like pretty much top tier for PVE, it's really hard to even justify that. Mm. To his like to use ability mods on him. It's, yeah, I'd put him in like waste tier. <laughs> so even though if Yun Chan went to R six with the block effect, it won't really change much the priority, right? Um, not really. You might be move up to no rush at R six, but it's not really too much of a difference. I see. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Brewster. So Brewster. Oh, by the way, all the experts here we're looking at is uh, R2 on default, then maybe I'll mention out some situation for R6 as well. Then let's say Brewster. Brewster is one of the meta PvP experts used to be on a previous point war before Mavis and Anna came out, I, I believe. And so I believe it will be less, it will be harder for Brewster to actually um, play in PvP now. But I, was, I still see him quite often warm up match. So. Personally, I think I will I will uh, max out Brewster, but depends on the situation. Like if if I'm against Mavis Com or Anna Com, then I won't I won't say Brewster is the high priority. But how how do you think in the meta currently for Brewster? Um, I reckon Brewster is actually still decent in this meta, even with Mavis and Anna. I think with Anna specifically, you wouldn't really want to bring him, but with Mavis. You could easily just focus down Mavis first with the Bruce Dodds. Not really too crazy. I'd also put him in Max It, but maybe on the lower side of the priority or mm. in Max It. Maybe it's important? Um or this maybe put in uh, Max It for now. Uh-huh. And we can we can just move it down later. Yeah, okay, sure. If we need to. Because yeah. um the ability mods for Brewster is mainly for the the, the chance of defend break and the damage output, right? Yeah, and then there's some... Uh, obviously, the cooldown uh, goes down by one mm -hmm. for, I think, S3 and S2. And other than that, it's really, it really doesn't make too much difference. Okay. Uh, the next one, Cecilia. One of the meta experts for the tank team. And uh, recently, Cecilia got buffed. So I believe Cecilia is now very strong. And I think Cecilia have to max out the S3 for the healing amount and for the cooldown. But I'm not sure about the S1. Is it that really important to actually skill her up? So what is your opinion on Cecilia? Um, I'd say you pretty much have to max out her S3. Because it goes from 25 to 35% and also has a cooldown reduce. Mm -hmm. And for S1, it's literally just some damage. It's not really... <laughs> I'd consider that unlucky if you get into her S1, some of Billy Mons. But um, yeah, I'd say mm, max her S3, but 
So we should actually try to focus to max S3. Uh if if I I'd say maybe put it in important, but it's like ten percent healing isn't too crazy, so hmm. I'd say put important. It won't yeah. make much difference in her kit, right? Yeah, cause cleave meta will kill that anyway, so <laughs> <laughs> I see. Okay, uh Matteo? One of the PvE Esper, but uh, in PvP we rarely see Mateo. But I recently saw some of the clips that is Mateo one shotting Anna. So, how do you think about Mateo in PvP content? Um, Mateo, like Brewster, is just really good at single target damage, especially mm -hmm. with his S3, just, just crazy amount of damage because um. I'm pretty sure he has some speed scaling as well, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. Or am I thinking of someone else? Yeah, so he has a lot of potential for damage, especially because he multi-hits instead of just one hit. And since you're going to be skilling him up for PvE anyway, I'd say it's uh, pretty easy to put him in max it. Max it? Yeah, because you'll be max skilling him anyway for PvE, given the chance. Okay. Yeah. Okay, um, the next one, Li Ling. So Li Ling recently had the buff, which she, which Li Ling can, is able to rotate the S3 to S2 and then S2 will refresh S3 again. And it's multi-hitter as well. And then he have AP Absorb, AP Down, have Seer, pretty much a lot of uh, kit in him. But I don't really think he needs the skill to max it out because the DPS output is not that much difference. And he don't really need the cooldown since the S2 is able to reset the S3 cooldown already. So I personally, I would say on decent or no rush, but how do you think? Yeah, I just take a, took a look at him and all of his uh, ability mons except for S2 is just more damage. Yeah. But if you're cycling his uh, skills so much anyway, it's really not too important to max out his uh, skills you'll be doing a lot of damage anyway but i'd say maybe if he's like your main dps bar or if you just really like him you can max him out i'd put him in decent decent yeah but you're not really mm. going out of your way to do his ability mods unless you really like him if that's the case i think it's no rush because it's like you love leeling then you'll max him out but other than other than that you don't really want to max dealing out because he's doing his job anyway right yeah yeah that's true because there's so many other espers that you <laughs> yeah might want to prioritize over him yeah so i would think leading is no rush yeah okay uh changji changji is one of the meta esper for the tank team and also for the exodia team and i'm pretty sure if you're trying to play Changji in PvP content is definitely gonna be R2 above and definitely have to max out his skill for the damage output, right? Yeah. There's there's really no doubt here. You have to max him out. Have to max if you want to use him, yeah. Okay. Uh Anna, our PvP god Esper who can <laughs> basically solo solo everyone if you don't bring the um the correct counter to actually counter Anna, then Anna will be like immortal, right? Uh but I, I think since you already have, if we already have Anna, we, we, we probably have to just max her, max her out, right? Yeah, um, I've seen a lot of cases in RTA, especially where because they didn't max out their skills, they're cycling their, like, their skills a little slower because... The cooldown. It's just a longer cooldown, and then... I've ended up winning every Anna 1v1 because no one else skills up the Anna. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I'd say it's obviously just to put it to max it, but it's less priority than some others. Mm. Because she already, it feels so overwhelming without skills already, but it just depends on how you're trying to use her. And Especially in high level RTA, high level uh, PvP, you'd want her maxed. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if you have someone like. Like we fighting know, Yungnua, lower, lower tier, right? You don't really need to care. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> it just depends on what other espers you would have to prioritize over her. Mm. But I'd put her like a low tier max it, but not in, in important. Yeah, never mind. We'll mm. just put it still at max it. I think she definitely worth the max it, but depends on how are they going to judge their own Asper legendary mon. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, next one. Donna recently get a massive buff and I use him very actively in RTA, KO and also Pornwall as well. His recent kit is very amazing. I really love um, Donna now. And I also see Donna is pretty active in other players' Asper pool as well. I would say max it. At least for the S2 because the S2 cooldown is really really important. Um, for the S3 wise, depends right. So because potentially he can one shot people already with the S3 and S2 combo. So I would say it's in on important. At least focus on S2 to be max. But how do you think? Oh, um, his S2 is definitely the the most important thing because. <laughs> Even myself, I I've seen him just wipe my team in one turn because yeah. of his R6 effect. And um, his S3, it's still quite a bit of damage from 100% um, from 100% defense to 140% defense. So mm. it's uh, it will definitely make the difference. But Especially with it, the cooldown uh, reduced. Will, will it change but, much? Uh, like if you, they max out the S2 already, should they also try to max out the S3 or maybe save the ability mon for other Esper since the S2 is max? I'd say it's worth a try. Worth because a, try. a lot of the time you're using against um, Donut against Cleave teams anyway, so you just that tiny bit extra damage can make sure that a specific Esper, like if their Raven will die or something. So I, I'd say it's pretty worth it. Mm, important? Yeah. Important. Okay. Um, Nusi, so one of the meta Esper as well for the Exodia team <laughs> and pretty active in RT as well. Pretty active in every content for PvP as well. So. Um, personally, I don't have no C, so I don't really know if we should max her skill up because her skill is increase her damage. But if we manage to max it, we have the cooldown reduction by one turn. So, what is your opinion on no C? Um, so specifically, her S2 uh, it grants all allies speed up, it also gives them an AP push depending on how many stacks of her paper talisman she has. Oh, right. And right. so, um, at max cooldown, I mean, at max ability mon, um, she gives 6% per stack, so mm -hmm. up to 24% uh, AP push, as well as resetting cooldown of one S bar. And just that, having a cooldown reduced by one turn, is just crazy good. And also, her, um, her S3. You obviously want to cycle it more, especially because you'll be running her at um, higher speed builds. And it really does make a huge difference. Um, because a lot of time you see her in tank teams, you see her in cleave teams, you might not be only using her for that one to two turns. So I'd say it's mm, max. Okay, agree, agree. Yeah. Even though the skill up is for damage output, but... You are, we are actually aiming for the CD, re CD reduction. Yeah, the cooldown reduction is definitely a lot, m like, huge priority there. It doesn't matter even if there's like, the, the damage uh, buffs in the uh, ability mode, because you're just going for the cooldown reduction anyway. Okay, okay. Uh, the next one, Chang Chuli. So recently have a massive change as well for the demon mode thing, and personally. I, I max he max skill him, but I actually don't really think um, he really needs the um, skill ability mode since he mainly you mainly want him to go into demon mode, and in demon mode you cannot skill up anything. You don't really re uh, reduce the CD for the demon mode or anything. It just increase the S one and S three damage, but it don't really affects his damage in demon mode. So if I have the extra ability mode, so I max it out, but personally, I 
think it's actually no rush or decent because of his kit don't really need the s3 damage if you often let him to go into demon mode so how do you think um i personally also maxed my jung julie um skills out but really it's not crazy important um right now if you had him before the update you can always just try him out with skills if you don't like him or if you see no difference you can just reset him anyway mm -hmm. <laughs> so um i'd say he's not really that important i'd say put him in decent mm -hmm. um especially because if you're in demon mode you don't really have too much control he's already doing one thing anyway and that's damage yeah and legendary ability <laughs> won't really affect him in demon mode as well yeah Hmm. Okay, the, the next one, Intisa. So, Intisa, when she reached R2, I believe uh, most of the player who have Intisa or actively play Intisa is using Intisa to counter Anna. That's what I have seen. And <laughs> the, the legendary ability mode will increase Intisa's um, skill, ability, damage. So, I think which is a pretty important thing for Intisa since DP, uh, Intisa is the DPS output there. And she needs the S1 and S3 damage as well. So I would say it's either important or max it if you're playing Intisa. But how do you think? The thing with Intisa is the, that uh, her only role here, which I've seen, is um, just countering Anna. Yeah. You can see <laughs> Genie. You can see uh, if you have Raven, you can use Raven. Even Gaius sometimes. It, it, it's really hard to justify using Indesa in the first place mm -hmm. so I'd say she's not really in a good position right now to actually max out for PvP unless oh, you're struggling or she's one of your few DPS espers so if you have her and she's your main DPS or if she's one of only two I'd say maybe put her uh, skills up, but if not, I'd say just ignore her to be honest. Mm, so, maybe in the rush, this... like Lily. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because her only purpose is just one, right? Counter Anna, but other than that, mm. you don't really want to use Intisa. Yeah, so yeah. I agree with that part. And she's not like the best Anna uh, counter. counter anyway, so yeah, <laughs> it's very hard to justify using her. True. Uh, next one, Unus, one of our best AP pusher in this light, but currently because of other Esper releases and Unus skills off from the meta. So if I if I have Unus now, if I just join the game and I have Unus, I don't really think I will max Unus S3 as well because I won't be using Unus in PvP situation now. So I would say it's a waste or no rush, but how do you think about Unus performance now? Well, specifically for right now it's kind of almost a shame how bad he is in pvp <laughs> yeah as a shimmer esper his performance yeah. is bad <laughs> at least before when hollow battle was relevant he would still be used a lot yeah <laughs> especially because he was the only like 35 percent speed yeah. lead but like now you can't justify using him because he just doesn't give enough to the team yeah so i'd say Pretty much waste right now. Waste right now. So even max yeah. out, he can't really perform anything else in the PvP content. Yeah, the only time I've seen him do anything is with an XP buff and then <laughs> <laughs> But that's not really doing like that's not really saying much, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Alright. Uh the next one, Ethan. So Ethan is mainly used in not many use, it's like almost used every in every kind of speedcom in PvP now. And I think the ability mod on Ethan is very important or even have to max out because all the triggers rate, all the CD reduction is all inside the skill ability mod. If you didn't skill him up, the CD reduction, the CD you need is actually very long. You need a 6 turn to actually cast the S3. So I think because of the usage in PvP and how good is the legendary ability mod on Ethan, I would definitely say max him. But how do you think about it? about him oh i definitely max him especially because on his s2 the um the trigger chance yeah uh it, it's for both defense down 
Oh, it's just for defense down, and that's really the main thing, especially if you're not using Raven. Um, it's... You really don't see defense break in many other espers. Like, maybe if you're using, like, a support esper or something, but, uh... A lot of the time, especially in the main kind of big cleave meta, mm -hmm. other than Raven, you don't really see too much defense break, so... True. I'd say it's uh, it's very good idea to max him out if you can. Mm. So the priority for Ethan is actually also like very high because of his the the trigger chance, right? And also just his high usage rate. So yeah. Yeah. Um, champion. So one of the main um, buffer you need to play as a cliff comp because you now in the tank meta they are very very tanky and most probably you need champion's buff to actually manage to cliff them and. If you have champion and the usage is like the every content in the game, I would definitely say max her out. So what do you think? Um, just by looking at her kit real quick, cause I do not have her. I'm just looking at Alice. <laughs> um, uh, just purely because of her S two, you would want to max that one out, cause it grants your ally 100% AP. Yeah. So you're giving them a turn basically. And um, her S3 is also just giving stacks of soldier to everybody. And um, it's just overall very worth it, maybe other than her S1, which is just damage buff. Mm. So you recommend maxing out S2 first, then if you pray luck, maybe max out S3. <laughs> so you will pray don't go into S1. Yeah, basically. So. Um, I would say she's a max it as well because <laughs> her damage is so <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> without without champion, we champion the damage output is a total different level. Yeah, it's 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 a, yeah, it's very <laughs> crazy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, Embla. So Embla is one of the PV, PVE meta, but in PvP, I don't really see Embla in point or the PP in the PP content. So I don't really think the skill wipe is worth for Embla as well since he's, uh, her damage output is from the seed and not from the skill damage. So I would say it's a waste. So how do you think? Yeah, waste. it's not really much to talk about. <laughs> just, just put her in waste. And I've, I've seen her in some niche PvP teams, but it's it's very not really... Not like, really worth it. It's not it. crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not worth it. Uh, okay, Lian. One of the meta experts in PvP, so I would say definitely max her out because the skill level increase her shield strength. Um, the CD reduction is very important because if you build her with Ocean Wave, you can pretty much rotate the S3, always rotate her S3, right? So I would say max her out. Say So how do you think? Yeah, um, from what I've seen in PvP, she's a, just a nightmare once she nightmare. gets her bubbles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, it's so bad. And just healing everyone um, when they get hit. The heal, it just, yeah. they, it basically just cocks your cleave if you see her R6. It's just not worth going up against. <laughs> if, if, if she managed to cast bubble, then we're gonna yeah. have to play very long. <laughs> yeah. It just basically increases your survivability by like almost too much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Next one, Raven, one of the cliff team as per in PvP meta, and I definitely say she worth all the skill up because every single damage from Raven is very important, especially the cooldown, especially the R, uh, the S two damage as well, which is the passive is what she deals the massive amount of damage. So I would say it's max it. But how do you think about Raven? Since you play Raven yeah. a lot, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm a, a resident Raven abu abuser. Um, she just does a ridiculous amount of damage. Especially because the, the requirements for that are so low. It's literally just attacking someone that doesn't have a buff to send her S2, nuke them, and then you nuke them again with your S3. <laughs> which makes you nuke again with your S2. It's, it's it's a ridiculous cycle and the more damage is there, the better. Because you can definitely cleave even tank teams with her. Yeah, I saw 
sometimes I just like get one shot by Raven's passive. I'm like, wow. <laughs> I just, I just, I haven't do anything. Yeah, yeah. I, I already lost. <laughs> Yeah, you could probably add in my clip of me just one-shotting this guy's uh, team. Yeah. yeah. Right here. <laughs> okay. It's it's ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, Ginny. So one of the main esper to actually counter Anna because Anna is a uh, weakness to multi-hitter and and um, Ginny is able to deal massive amount of damage due to her multi-hit. I definitely say she worth the skill up and she must have the skill up to actually rotate her S2 and S3 rotation and also the damage wise. So I would say it's max it. So what do you think? Yeah, you just max her out because even if you're not against Anna, just still doing huge amounts of damage to tank teams as well. It's it's kind of ridiculous her damage uh, when you set her up right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Tava. So. Tava used to be one of the meta as per for PvP. I think recently Tava got skilled down because of all the other as uh, new Esper that came out. Actually, pretty counters Tava's kit. So I would say is Tava still worth the skill up, but since he's not really used in PvP content that much already, so what tier or what position is he in current PvP meta? Oh, um. You see Mavis, yeah. <laughs> you're not gonna be using him. You see Anna, he's useless against her basically. Yeah. Unless you get like the first turn, where a lot of the time, <laughs> it's Tevez not gonna be going first in your team, and so he's never gonna be at a point where Anna doesn't have stacks. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. All of his skills, one hit, one hit, that's it. So he's not really going to be seeing a lot of use if you see Anna or Mavis. But outside of that, he is still a monster. Hmm. He will one-shot anyone, basically. <laughs> yeah. So I'd say he's important right now in the, the current meta, but he's not really high priority enough to put in max it. Because like that's everywhere is Mavis and Anna now, right? So it's, yeah. it's hard to really use him. But uh, in the off chance you don't see them, use Tevo. Yeah. He's honestly crazy how much damage he can do against one single person. Okay, basically one so, show with S3. Yeah. And if you don't, he he will probably follow up. He follow who I forgot where he how he follows up. He follow us when it's R6, so without R6, Tava just is one shot. Yeah. Okay, uh, Tang Xuan, the Monkey King that can deal AoE damage and Pursuit Chance. I don't really think he is strong in PvP, so I will definitely, I will probably put him in the waste tier. But do you see any other Monkey King is used in PvP? I can't justify putting a Billy Mons into him purely for PvP. Mm. Maybe if his um his S1 uh, Billy Mons made him get more chance to Pursuit. follow up <laughs> to pursue. Yeah, but right now all he has is damage. Mm. So waste. It's just all damage buffs. It's pretty much a waste. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Farah, one of the meta that is able to counter Cliff Team because of her key is able to push her AP and then she can do AoE Freeze and recently Freeze got buff as well. So, but I, I use Farah a lot in my current warm up match, but I don't skill her up because I mainly just use her to, to freeze them. I don't really use her as a DPS, so I didn't skill her up. So, for me, I don't really think she's that in a rush to actually skill her up, but skilling her up is pretty good for her damage output. But I don't really um, want to put my ability on, on her while I want to invest on other unit. So what do you think about Farah's performance? Yeah, I don't have Farah, but I definitely agree on that point because you're just using her as a freeze bot, especially with how powerful freeze is at the moment. You're, you're in no rush to max her out. It's all just damage buffs. Yeah. Okay, um, next one, Tolan, one of the, not one of, it's the speed king in this light. Uh, if you have Tolan, most probably you're gonna um, outspeed anyone who doesn't have Tolan. 
and in his ability mode kit is mainly increasing his damage which i think not really needed for the damage because you if i play tolan i just want tolan to zero out someone then that's all for his job <laughs> so i would say yes. it's waste or no rush but how do you think i put no rush the only reason you'd be maxing out his skill is if you have a, like a very niche dps tolan DPS Poland, <laughs> wow. Yeah, <laughs> you see what I mean? It's just not really like worth it, especially with his kit, just locking someone out for for basically the whole game. Mm -hmm. So you're kind of just using him to lock someone out and that's really all you need anyway. True. Or if you have him on light set to give your team a little bit of an AP push as well. Yeah. Yeah, I'm playing with like set. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, uh, next one, Jin Chu. So, Jin Chu, R6 is able to counter Hilda, but because of the R6 is like such a long way to get the Rezo, so most of us don't have R6 Jin Chu, and without R6 Jin Chu, I don't see Jin Chu is actually used in PvP content, so I would say it's a waste, but how do you think? Yeah. The only reason why you'd even summon for him without going for R6 is for Andrus anyway, so <laughs> you're yeah. not going to be using a Billy Mons on him. Okay, um, next one, Iliad. Iliad is, even though some of, some, I saw some of the players mention that Iliad uh, is useless now, but I don't agree because I think Iliad is like still a crazy Asper in PvP. She, he is able, especially in warm-up match, he is able to um, CD up two Asper. To max and then he can taunt them to hit him and he can reduce the skill ability cooldown just by the s3 himself as a passive so because of that i don't think he really needs the ability mon because since he can reduce his own cooldown of his s3 but because of her of his s2 increase the trigger rate for the taunt so i'm not really sure where should i put Iliad on so how do you think about Iliad? um you might want to use some on him, maybe, if you're using him a lot, uh, because he's one of the only espers that will reduce someone's cooldown, or extend someone's cooldown. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't have Noah, then you're probably using Elliot. Yeah. So, I, I, <laughs> I'd say he's pretty worth. A lot of people do actually underestimate him a lot. I'd put him maybe decent with Jiang Mm-hmm. So, it's but, like the kid is there. Then yeah, the kit is there. It's already strong enough without it. It's a bit stronger with it. So it's up to you if you want to actually do it. But he's very good with mm. Billy Mons. Yeah, I think a lot of people underestimate the Iliad. Mm. Mm. The next one, TA. So TA is like the the most of the the most usage for the speed, um, lead Esper, and her ability mode only increases her damage and the. Unless you max her ability to max and then you only get one turn cooldown. Personally, I won't really put in the ability mod to TA just for the one turn cooldown. Uh, but how do you think? Do you, do you think um, TA really did that one turn cooldown in her skill up? Ooh. Um, really, the only thing you're worried about in TA's kit to max out is probably her S2. Oh. Because mm -hmm. it, it... Like... The stun, especially if your opponent doesn't have a like a, a cleanser or something, makes so much of a difference. And it goes from four turns to three turns cooldown, oh. which is very low. So if you can cycle that S2 quickly, <laughs> you kind of just lock out the other team. I see. Uh, especially like if it's a tank team, mm -hmm. the game will be going for a little longer. You kill their cleanser and then you just lock out the team. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But uh, it's not really like a crazy strategy because most of the time you see a hide anyway, so it's not really <laughs> <laughs> applicable too much. But um, I'd say maybe decent. Decent. It's like not good, really good high have. priority. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's great to have, especially if you have that S three finally come up at a very clutch moment and you just win because of it you know what i mean yeah okay mm. uh the next one valeria 
Valeria's kit is mainly just increasing her damage and increasing the um, trigger chance for the AP down. But I don't really think Valeria is really that strong in PP unless you max her until R6. So I will say it's a waste unless we have high reso for Valeria. So what do you think about Valeria? Yeah, I agree. You barely see her, if at all, in PvP. Uh, it's not really worth it, yeah. Okay, uh, Liam. So Liam, um, Kit is like supporting and then I do see Liam in PvP content like um, because of his revive kit, his healing kit, his support kit for the team. I don't think it's really that often seen but I do see uh, when I see them it's pretty hard to fight with because if they have um, built in with Anna if I manage to kill their Anna then maybe Liam can revive the Anna as well and Liam will um, make the other Esper support to keep assisting with S1 so I would say it's either no rush or decent but how do you think about Liam in P um, PvP? Mm, from what I've seen um, he's used a lot with like just a cleave i've seen him in cleave meta uh sometimes Ooh. and seen him other times in uh tank meta I, but he's not really that common to see yeah so i don't know i haven't seen him actually do that well either especially in point war defense you want to maybe use him on offense or something where you can actually control your team, but on defense is almost kind of useless in that aspect. I'd mm. say you're in no rush to do it. So it's not a waste to invest, but the kid yeah, is Yeah, because huh? uh, it's definitely not a waste because you're using him for PvP, PvE anyway, so it's like... <laughs> if, if, if he sees some issues in PvP, that's awesome, but you're not in a rush to max him out for PvP specifically. Mm -hmm, agree. Uh, Gaius, one of the Asper that is uh, able to ca counter Anna if you if you um, leave Anna at the last and then you just land all the thunder on Anna, you are able to counter. Then uh, uh, Gaius is also often used in Cliff team, I believe, and also for warm up match if they cause um, he's only targeting four Asper, which the thunder is able to land more. So I would say. Important on max it, but how do you think about Gaius now in the current meta? Well, most people you, they probably already max him out anyway. To be honest, <laughs> um, <laughs> you, you see him li uh, like from his release until now. I'd say he's used in pretty much all content, other than maybe trials. Mm -hmm. In the event sometimes where he's just not applicable, I'd say he's. If you're just starting an account now, he's important, but I, I can't say, uh, no, nah, I would max him. Yeah, I would max him out. Max him. Um, he's cycling his S2 is very important and, uh, he needs that cooldown reduced. True. And, uh, his S3 is also just doing so much damage. Mm. So yeah, max, max him out. He, he's used in every content. You may as well. Okay. Um, next one, I'm a... I used to use Ahmed a lot in my tank team in PvP, but in recent meta, I think he fell off. I don't know why, but I feel like he fell off from the meta. I rarely see people use Ahmed now, so I don't really think I don't really know where should I put Ahmed in. So what do you think? Thing is with uh, Ahmed is without R six, he's not going to be doing a lot. Because uh, a lot of the time you see his build would be super tanky and not crazy fast. So with the R6, he'll be counter. He'll he'll attack someone to heal your team if they're hit for I think under thirty percent, fifty percent, thirty percent. Yeah. So uh, that a lot of the time that will actually just save your other espers, but. Uh, until you get him R6, I wouldn't really say it's too worth putting a Billy Mon in him. No rush? Because he will heal your whole team on S3 anyway. Yeah. 
<laughs> so uh, unless you're using him everywhere or or something like that, I, I wouldn't say it's really a huge rush. I'd put him in decent. Oh, I I thought you're gonna like um, put it at no rush. And you can put him in no rush as well. It's not really like <laughs> high priority anyway. Mm -hmm. I just I just like using Ahmed to ah. decent. <laughs> okay. Uh, Sally, so one of the meta healer, I was believe, like her legendary ability mod increased the rate of getting immunity for herself. The S2 cooldown is very important for two turns. The healing amount from the S3 as well, everything the ability mod uh, level up is important for her kit because of the healing amount, the trigger chance, the cooldown reduction. So I would say it's a max hit. And what do you think? Yeah. Um... You'd want to max her out, especially if you don't have her R6. Mm. Just her, her kit being as good as it is, you kind of want to max it out. Because the damage reduction alone is honestly worth it on its own. Just getting her to do her uh, S3 is so good. Okay. And getting more of that healing and uh, having that cooldown reduced is so good. Uh, the next one, Luis. So the one of the one of the uh, R six Luis team, uh, what's that called? The R six is able to overkill damage to spread to everyone. But even though in the current meta, like we have maybe so we have Anna, everything else. So I think Luis is now rarely used in PvP meta. I would say it's a waste because if you invest on him, you don't even use him often in PvP. But how, what's your opinion on Luis now? I've seen some people talk about him as like a niche counter to Anna, but <laughs> if you if you have genie and stuff, it's honestly just easier to use, mm -hmm. and he's not really that worth. I'd put him in waste as well. Okay. Um, next one, Ashley. So Ashley mainly used in I don't know a uh, speed comp that wants that cannot outspeed people. You want Ashley to actually pump your team with the rainbow bridge stacks but is the mm. skill ability really that important i don't really know because if they use ashley most probably it's just for her passive from the start then after that it's not really that important anymore so what do you think about ashley yeah um she used to be the one of the main people you'd use in cleave but nowadays because she only does one hit all she does is give um, attack up and some Shield. extra buffs with her rainbow bridge stuff like that um, it's kind of if you're min maxing cleave you're not going to be using her and cleave's the only team you'll be using her in anyway I'd say no rush or a waste mm. it's up to you maybe no rush I guess because since the People will still use her if they scared to get out speed. So okay, yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah, Just put a no rush. Okay, uh, Nora. So I don't really see Nora in any kind of PvP content, even though her kit were meant to actually counter um, Cleave team when she's on R two. But even so, I don't really see Nora. So I would say investing on Nora is a waste. But do you see that Nora in PvP content? I do not see Nora at all, um, <laughs> especially because most of the time uh, you might see her in point war sometimes, but I'm so high in point war where you don't see anything other than meta. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I, I don't see her at all. Um, yeah, I'd say it's a waste. waste. Okay, uh, Camille, our free to play Esper that we can get, and she is like the bleed god. But even though after the bleed count, I don't really think um, Camille really can cover anyone or replace anyone in the PvP meta. So I would say it's a waste. So, how do you think? Yeah, she's kind of just a one trick pony, it's just some <laughs> damage, but you don't really see a lot of it. Mm. She's like a, a, a a weaker raven kind of because you see her yeah. <laughs> you see her recycle her uh, skills some especially if you're using ocean waves but her damage isn't great her bleed won't really 
make much of a difference. It's kind of a waste for PvP. Mm, agree. Uh, next one, Zora. Zora, we say Zora is like the lower version of Gaius. Because Gaius is a better version of Zora. So, I would say it's a waste. I don't really see Zora in any kind of PvP content. Do you see any Zora? I mean, outside of like this one account where I've seen them max out their Zora and use them in P PvP, no. You don't really see Zora at all in PvP. So, it's a waste. Yeah. Mm, okay. Uh, the next one, Senior. So Senior, the AP down, the S3 that's full, can fully AP clear and also able to stun and she is able to provide buffs as well. So I would say it's important to actually max her, not, not max her, like skill her up. But I don't really see uh, much people using Senior now. So uh, what, what position is her at, at current PvP meta? The thing is, you might see her in RTA sometimes or in knockout because she's one of the better just buffers for your team mm -hmm. um if you see her in RTA most people underestimate her most people forget that she stuns for two turns at R6 as well yeah and AP clear is just <laughs> so annoying AP clear you just lose if you're using cleave basically um so, she's a very underrated Esper, mm -hmm. and I would say you kind of need to max, like, at least her S3 and S2, you want to max those out, but um, other than that, I wouldn't, it's, it's kind of hard to use her otherwise, mm. because it goes from 80% to 100%. Um, and if you can't get that consistency, it's hard to rely on her. So I would say it's important, but she's not really that high priority in terms of usage. Agree. Yeah. Uh, next one, Hilda. So Hilda, before R6 and after R6, there's also a lot of usage in PvP. I, I do see people without R6 still use Hilda, especially me. I also use Hilda without R6 as well. And her kit is very good because of the sleep and poison. But personally, I don't skill her up because it, I don't really have that ability mod to invest on her. I, and I don't think she needs the ability mod that high priority even though for the one turn cooldown. Uh, so personally, I would, I would say it's either decent or no rush. But how do you think about Hilda? Should we max her out? I mean, the only thing you're using her for is to keep the other team asleep. Mm -hmm. um, her, all of her ability upgrades damage, yep. damage, damage, and then cooldown reduce. Yep. Um, most of the time, you wouldn't be using her for that long anyway. Because mm -hmm. a lot of time, people use her to, at least at R6, to, to um, counter cleave. Before R6, you'd see her in a speed team to try and get first turn, mm -hmm. stuff like that. And really, all you need is one to two turns, which Hilda already has, um, even without a Billy Mons. I'd say almost a waste. So, waste. Yeah. She's great with no Billy Mons already, so it's. <laughs> Don't. Yeah. <laughs> Understood. Yeah, it's all it, yeah. Okay, um, next one, Gabriel. So, Gabriel used to be very active in PvP, but currently, I think she fell off. But even though she fell off, I think her kit is still very unique. I do see someone use Gabriel to counter my Anna. They slowly, slowly um, CD up my Anna, and then they use Anna, uh, Gabriel's multi hit to actually kill my Anna, so which is very surprising for me. And because of that, and because what she is able to provide for the team, I think the skill up actually matters. So I would say it's either decent or important, but how do you think about Gabriel in current meta? The thing is, for her kit, um, Abilimon actually matter a lot. Mm. You want to max out her Abilimons, especially if you, like... If you uh, were playing while she was grindable to R6, the R6 effect is kind of crazy three turns of immunity yeah is actually 
really good. And you see her a lot more nowadays because people are using Dona. Oh, right. And just getting that um that defense buff is huge as well. True, true. Defense true. buff immunity for Dona is just really powerful. If you can get her defense break off as well, it's makes Dona just a monster. So true. I'd say nowadays, especially with Dona's buff, is she's very worth using the ability mod with. Mm, yeah, so after you're saying this, I think she worth the max it or it um uh, important. Uh I think it mostly depends on your donor's investment. If your donor is already R6 from uh from point war, uh I would max her out now. If not, I'd put her in point. Just uh pair her with donor, put her next to yeah, donor there. At least. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, the next one, Everett used to be one of the meta PP experts like we used in all PP situation, but I think Everett fell off now. I don't really see Everett that often now. So, but his kit, I think he needs the skill up to make him work, even though it's not often seen in PP now. So I would say it's important to skill him up if you want to play him. But I, uh, I do believe I don't really see him often in PP now. How do you think about Everett? Yeah, um, he used to be used everywhere because he was a free R6. Yeah. And just that huge stat difference was enough to make it worth it to use him. But now because of the addition of um, of Divinits, yeah. you can compete in terms of stats with pretty much every Esper that you have if you invest in them enough, even without Rezos. So, um, he kind of fell off because once you stun him, he's useless. <laughs> true, true. She, she can't counter attack. <laughs> yeah, and uh, you, even if he, it's just a taunt, he, mm -hmm. he can't counter attack from there. And his damage I've seen is also just hasn't been too great recently. So because it, it's mm -hmm. it's it's quite hard to use him because his usage is just hide but a little bit worse you know what i mean yeah <laughs> so um i can't really justify using a billymon on him unless did you max out your everett let me check i don't think i did because i never really used um tank meta mm. because if of course i maxed out my everett and if if they gave me a rewind token I get. I think I'll actually reset him to get back my ability mode because I don't really use him in my PP content now. So yeah, I would say uh, waste. I, but... I actually did max him, but uh, yeah, like that's it. It's a waste right now. Yeah. So so if you have the chance to rewind, you actually rewind Everett. Hmm. Okay. There will waste it is. <laughs> All right. Uh, Phantom Sister, one of the. One of the Asper that you have to use in your Exodia team, at least that's what I've seen in most of the KO team um, using Phantom Sister because of the AP down, the miss rate up, the defend up, uh, her revive kit, her healing kit. It's like just amazingly good. So I would say it's important to max max her out. Uh, I think it's important to skill her up, not really need to max that urgent because I think she only used in Exodia team. But her skill up really matters for her kit because it's a lot of um, difference, not just damage, you know, also increase the AP down, the cooldown, the healing amount. So what do you think about Phantom Sister? I think outside of um, Exodia team, her usage is very similar to Gabriel, mm -hmm. other than immunity, because of what she brings is a lot of like healing, um, invincibility, speed up, defense up, so uh, and miss rate up as well, which helps a lot. So, I'd say she's pretty. They're they're in a pretty similar spot to Gabrielle, where it's um if you have certain espers, it makes it a lot more worth it. Mm -hmm. Uh, with the examples being Exodia or Dona, and if you don't, you're not really going to be using them at all. So I'd say it's important to use if you have the teams, but yeah, okay. outside of that, it's almost not really worth. Once we have to use them have to be max but if we don't use yeah. them it's not really that important yeah yeah <laughs> i see all right uh elaine one of the choice for us to pick to actually counter anna i would say 
because of that, if you really want, if you don't have Genie and you want to counter Anna, I think Elaine is the second best choice to actually go for because of the um, the stealth buff currently. So I would say it's important to skill up because of the damage output you, if you really want to counter Anna. But I don't really know like if other situation rather than just counter Anna, do we actually need to use Elaine or not? So what do you think about Elaine? Um, Elaine is the one of the premier counters to Anna, but the thing is like unless you have a decently tanky as well, it's kind of hard to use her. Mm -hmm. e even uh, with her stealth, once she doesn't have stealth, <laughs> she's not really bringing almost anything to the table other than countering Anna. Yeah, the, her the only one trick pony. Just to yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. Really, if you have any of the other counters, it could even be a, a softer counter like Gaius or something. I'd say it's not really, not really that worth it. So if would you, you rate her at waste or no rush? I put it on no rush, similar to Ashley, because um, in RTA, just ban Anna, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> If you don't know how to uh, counter uh, Anna, just ban Anna. Just, yeah, and in point war, you, you don't have to attack Anna teams. You can just refresh, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. So, I'd say, un unless you're manualing literally everything, <laughs> True, it's agree. kind of hard to use a lane. Cause, also, I don't think the AI is smart enough. Yeah. Okay, the next one, Hayley. So, Hayley... Before Haley released, I thought Haley was going to be like meta as per for PvP content because of her kit. But we un but at least I personally I underestimate I I I overthought he her kit because of the equipment set disable because actually it can be cleansed easily <laughs> or transfer away the debuff or just immunity up then basically Haley is useless there. So and I don't think Haley really needs the ability mod as well. So I would say Haley is a waste on ability mon, but how do you think on Hades' performance in PvP? Yeah, her ability mon's um, just damage and her actual usage is just utility. So you can't really justify using it. So yeah. waste. Mm. Sad. I thought I thought he would be one of the meta for PvP, but no. <laughs> in the end he <laughs> she, she is the meta for PvE. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, um, next one, J um, Jin Yuya. I think Jin Yuya definitely worth the max because of her unique kit that she's able, she's not able to get debuff, she's able to transfer debuff, she's able to cleanse and heal as well. I think the AP push from her passive and the CD reduction for her S3 is very important, so I would say it's max it. And I do see Jin Yuya is often used in all PvP content. So what do you think about Jin Yuya? Mm. I agree, because um, if your team gets disabled by any sort of uh, debuff, mm -hmm. you have a Jin Yuya S3, you, 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 <laughs> you don't have to worry about that at all. So um, I'd say just max her out if you can. Um, she's useful in tank teams, uh, in kind of like a hybrid tank teams as well. You see her a lot in the... <laughs> The big whale teams, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like Valerie's point one defense, you see her there all the time. It, if she's there, you can see why she's worth it if like a big whale's using her over shimmers, you know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. And, and she's also able to get for free for from uh, the first copy from, uh, mm, from mm. the ritual as well. The next one, Archibald. Archibald, I think Archibald is very scary if Archibald has managed to. Um, apply his S3 and pairing with Mavis is pretty scary and I think he actually worth a bit of the skill up but I don't, I don't think he's that rush of skill up because I do think his kit is already there so the skill up don't really matter that much so personally I would say Archibald is on decent but how do you think uh, Archibald in the current PvP meta? Do you see him often and how do you um, face him? Um, I see him the most in point wall yeah, and I think every time I've tried to fight those teams, I've lost. You lost? Wow! Because <laughs> yeah. it's usually like a, a pretty solid tank team with Mavis and stuff as well. Yeah, and um, they 
especially with how Archibald works, where he reduces cooldown. I mean, he extends cooldown, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, once he gets going, it's almost impossible to stop him. Yeah, it's just but, too annoying. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but if you can get him before that, then you're good. Um, if you see him with Mavis, it's terrifying. If, without Mavis, it's not too bad. Because you can just kill him. Do you think the skill up matters for Archibald? Um, at least for the trigger chances. Because he has a lot of debuffs in his kit. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say it's pretty worth. I'd say important if you have him with Mavis here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, with Mavis, it's very worth it, but how about. Without her. Uh, oh, it's very hard to use him without her, though, because once he dies, he loses all of that. Mm, true. And uh, with Mavis, if she has her, um, her, her golden buff on him, Graveless, he's invincible for two turns. That's another two turns of being annoying as fuck, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually very so, surprising, like, um, they released the uh, Mavis and Archibald as R0 Esper that can be this annoying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, the next one, Yamato. Uh, very cool design, very cool concept. Uh, the skill kit is pretty unique as well. But before R6, I don't really see or I don't really see Yamato at all in PvP content, even though some of the players who have R6 as well. So I would say it's a waste. So but how do you think about even though after the buff from Yamato? I I haven't seen him enough to have an opinion mm. on his kit. I haven't seen him being used at all. So, um, straight ways? <laughs> it, it's, it's very hard to have an opinion when you haven't seen him at all. So, I, I'd put him in waste for now, but... But we have to um, see. Yeah, but, mm. we'll have to see because not a lot of people have him. And he's basically locked behind R6 to even try to use him. Yeah, Ho hope they add Yamato to go record soon so we can actually try to get him <laughs> to play him. Yeah, because using wish stones only for someone it's... you don't know is going to be good is very hard. Yeah. Mm. Uh, okay, next one, Ophelia. So Ophelia is one of the best single target damage dealer, but because of her own kit that will reduce the damage from F S3, then the personal attack is getting lower and lower and lower and the current meta as well, and she's being wind type. Uh, even though I have her max, but recently I rewind her because I don't really use her at all. So I would say it's a waste. But how do you think about Ophelia? Um, I've seen her a couple times in RTA. Oh. Um, <laughs> it's actually quite terrifying because just her S two can one shot you if she's built well enough. Wow, one I shot. I think. Okay. I think one of the uh, guys I faced had her like D six R six. Wow. <laughs> one shot me with the S2 and then one shot me again with S3 so um, she's very good at doing damage if you do that so S2 into S3 but it's kind of high um, investment. investment yeah yeah very high investment to even see um, like any sort of results from that so I'd say it's important if you have her already like high investment but otherwise i'd say it's decent mm. and a lot of people do not have her that high investment so i'd say put her in decent yeah okay um biotina biotina i don't know some some of the high-end play will say biotina is like very strong but for personally for me i don't like biotina at all even though after her buff with the passive um, gold buff that's able to tank damage but so i would say it's a waste but how do you think about biotina in pvp well, Biondina, um, with her new buffs to where she gets um, like reduced damage taken, yeah. stuff like that. Uh, I haven't really seen her too often. Yeah, true. Um, but without, if like your, if your enemy team doesn't have buffs, her damage is very high, and it's AOE as well. So, but the thing is, a lot of the time, every team will have some sort of light buff, some yeah. sort of. Shield um, buff. <laughs> yeah, e e Ethan's buff right now is uh, bugged, so it so it still counts as that as well. So, um, it's very it's a hard case usage. Like you can't really use her too much. 
So, so waste? I, I put a you know, waste for now, yeah. Okay. Alright, I maybe I think we can agree Baby's kit is total waste because she increased her damage but no, but she doesn't need damage. <laughs> Yeah, they don't even have any sort of cooldown reduction, it's just yeah. all damage. <laughs> it's really weird in a kid, like, wh why, why should we need damage? Yeah, so it's but a it's complete a waste to we put can any sort of one. ability mode. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, when I saw that, I was so glad as well. Yeah, okay, save the ability <laughs> mode. Uh, yeah. Oli. So, Oli, as, as a speed lead leader, he is not often used in point one as well, but in KO, when you are trying to build for your 4th team and 5th team, I believe he comes in action very often. And I mm -hmm. think when he comes in action, you really need his ability to max out, especially for his passive. Because from 9 turn, reduced to 5 turn, I think it's a very big deal. So I personally, I would say it's important to skill him up. But how do you think? Yeah, uh, it's very important to skill him up, especially if you're using him in like a tank team. You might not even be using him as the speed lead. All right, you, uh, you could just have him in the back just for that passive. So you think he should it's, be max, or um, in terms of looking at this at this tier list, I would not put him in max because it uh, if you put him in max, it kind of looks like you need him and you're using him a lot. Ah, but true, true. you really only see him in knockout. So um, it's either I put him in decent actually. Oh, decent. Because okay. you because you rarely see him. Okay, uh, Clara. Mm. So I use Clara a lot because of her kit is AP push. She can heal. She can give immunity. She uh, counter and also can help me cleanse in my team. I use her often for my cliff team as well. My as my second AP pusher other than TA. Mm. So I would mm. say definitely max her out. But I do heard some people discussing about her like she fell off from the meta. So I'm not sure about this. So how do you think about Clara? Thing is, especially in RTA. If you bring Clara, and you ban the speed lead, if that's like a tier or something, you almost win every time. Because most people don't bring two AP pushes. They just bring their tier, and then the rest of their team. Not having Clara, not having uh, any other AP pusher. So I'd say it's very worth to max her out, especially because this tier list is R2 tier list uh, for Abilimon as well, right? Yeah. So you get two turns of uh, immunity. You get that bonus of having a an AP pusher, which you're building very fast. Uh, in in RTA, she's a definitely max. So Knockout. Overall, overall I'd, I'd actually p still put her in max it. Still, still like, max it. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. uh, just how much she's giving to your team, it's still very worth it. Okay, next one, Tricky. Um, once we use Tricky, I believe we really need the S3 to dispel the debuff. And then the S3 also applies Miss Rate Up, which is very strong. And it also increases the trigger chance. I think that is the most important thing because the trigger chance actually trigger for the dispelling, which is what we need for the S3. So I would say mm. Tricky is still very useful in pp especially for those hilda plus tricky combo or when we want to counter sally or jin yu yao i would still say he's one of the meta esper when we use her, him i would put mm. him at max it but how do you think well if you're going to use him you have to max him that's kind of the thing with uh, tricky because if you're not dispelling he's just useless you know what i mean <laughs> <laughs> he lost his he lost his position yeah <laughs> Mm. So yeah, I'd say you have to max him to use him. So yeah, just put him in max it. Okay, Lucas. Currently, Lucas got buff. Even though after the buff, I do hear people say Lucas is very strong now. But personally, I even though my mascot is a Lucas, I don't really find a use for Lucas in PP. So personally, I already reset my Lucas and get back all the ability mon. But how do you think about Lucas now? The thing is, ever since Tears buff, He's kind of been very useless. They they hold the same position, with, yeah, except down. Lucas uh -huh. Lucas without a speed lead. So <laughs> <laughs> so Tia basically um, outclasses him in every way. Uh, she has like her S three dispel, 
um, the way she just rearranges everyone's AP. Your slowest goes straight to the front, stuff like that. Um, it's <laughs> honestly, if you have tier, you're not using Lucas. Is pretty much a waste. Yeah, pretty much. A Without waste. a speed lead, um, he's very, very hard to use. He can't even fit in other team comp. <laughs> yeah, because he has well an accuracy, forty percent accuracy lead. I think. Just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Um, Ife, I think Ife can straight go to the waist here. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's so sad because she's so cute, but yeah, she's useless. <laughs> so sad. Every time Ife is like, okay, let's go to the tier. <laughs> yeah. All right, uh, Javid. Um, Javid, even though now recently have the buff, like the art, the effect for Scarlet Flame in R6 is able to immune to sleep and stun as well. Same same thing as Jinchu. So I would say it's a waste. Even because you need R6 to actually make him strong in PvP to actually counter certain Asper. So I mm -hmm. I would say mm -hmm. put him beside Jinchu. Yeah. Yeah, they're basically the same. Basically the same. He's, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um Hyde. Hyde used to be the one of the meta as PP Asper. I believe he's still one of the meta even though he fell off a bit, but I think because of his unique kit that he can't get debuffed and somehow he managed to get Mavis go buff so i think he's still worth the skill up and i think he still stays in the meta on pretty important role for pp content especially pairing him with maybe so what do you think about hype now he's definitely still worth using um because just having avatar on him at max stacks is very scary still mm -hmm. um divinates definitely helped him a lot now you can build him with like 3,000 attack and still have very good bulk. <laughs> so um, you're basically just... He does so much damage if uh, if you have enough tankiness. Uh, and with Mavis, you're basically guaranteed that. So I'd say max him. Max him, okay. Mm -hmm. Alright, you hear me. So our third speed leader with 25% universal buff. And uh, even though she has the speed lead, we have Ollie, we have TA. If among three of them, I do see TA a lot, I do see Ollie a lot, but I don't really see Yohimi at all. So just by judging from that and judging from her kit and what she's able to do, I think she is on a waste tier. How do you yeah, think? Yeah, um, mm -hmm. the only way you're gonna find use out of her is if you're doing manual and you're uh, using her S2 for defense break. And the only place you'd ever use her is knockout, where mm. you can't manual. So <laughs> it's very hard to use her. You want to use her, you want to manual, but you can only use her yeah. knockout, but can't manual. <laughs> yeah, so it's uh, it's, it's so sad, but um, it's a waste. It's a waste. So I'll put beside Yamato. Okay, mm. uh, Leora. Well, Leora. I don't know. Leora is like, we need the damage, but. I do use her very often, like at the previous RTA for the warm up match. But current current warm up match, I don't really use her at all because of our current new Esper. So, I don't really sure what is the current position of Leora. How do you think? Um, the previous knockout format, she was great. Mm -hmm. But now it's kind of hard to use her because she's in a very similar spot to Gaius, though. But she doesn't need the skills as much. Mm. Like their their role is exactly the same, uh, but Leora leans a bit more into damage and um, more support to the team rather than debuffing the enemy. Yeah. Um, I can definitely see her being very annoying to play against, but um, with so many dispellers recently, it's just kind of hard to use her. Mm. So no rush always. I'd say no rush. No rush. Yeah. Okay. Um, Abigail. I Abigail is one of the P, um, one of the meta asper in PvP. And then even though now I do, I I see her less often in PvP content. But when I see her, I still find her very annoying because of her AP push, the the buff she's able to give, she able to re revive. 
the, the fact that she can revive someone she's, that I killed and it's very annoying and the shield I do think she's still worth the max hit even though it's less often seen in PvP now how do you think about Abigail? yeah um the thing is uh she's still very very good but it relies too much on one or two like really good dps espers where if you just have <laughs> a ta or something just <laughs> ap push from ta is enough most of the time compared to having abigail uh, abigail is if like you have her slower than your main DPS, which you kind of don't want her to have anyway. So it's it's very hard to use her properly. Mm -hmm. But I think in RTA, she, you can definitely use her. Uh, knockout, you'd want to use her because there's not a lot of AP pushes. And point war, you're not going to be using her. I'd say she's important to actually max out. But, but not that rough. Um, <coughs> yeah, you're not, you're not in a rush for it. Okay, alright, the last S4 for today, which is Nama. Nama recently got a buff which increased the stat by 2 instead of 1, which in which dramatically increased the speed of him getting the stack. But even though, after the buff, I don't really see Nama at all, even though if play with the Nama with R6, because I believe because of Mavis and Anna in the current meta, I don't really see Nama in action at all, even in PvP content, or Knockout as well, or even warm up match or point more, not at all. So I would say it's a waste. But how do you think? Mm. I think if his S3, I'd say the thing is for him, he's pretty niche. If there's no Anna or Mavis, it, Anna or Mavis just hard counters him. You can't really use him. Yeah. <laughs> once you <laughs> see those two, because any sort of AoE damage you do too much, they all go graveless. Yeah, and then and then Mavis is still alive, and then you kill her, and then you have two turns to just kind of tank it out, and it's kind of hard to do that because you need a lot of um, supporters for him. Yeah, and if you're using that many supporters, you don't have a controller to stun the team with Graveless. It's very hard to use. So I'd say he's a waste. He's a waste. Hmm. Okay, so that's all for the Esper today. So now we're gonna conclude conclude the tier list. Is there anything after seeing the whole tier list like this? Do you think there's any Esper they need a change of position? Mm, not really. No. Not really. I think, uh, I think they, they fit in there. It's role. all. Yeah, it's all pretty much uh, well put. Uh, if anyone wants to actually have any input you can put it in the comments below actually yeah you, you can tell us like um what 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 thing that we discuss is actually false information to you feel free to point us out yeah yeah because this pov is from people a bit higher in pvp so it might be very different for lower tiers or um just how you want to play so just you know take it with a grain of salt you know what i mean yeah and, and mm. make sure you actually i i know some of you guys will sure always skip uh, skip to the conclusion part. I'm pretty sure of, about that. But even though, <laughs> feel free, you can go and check out like which expert we're discussing. Maybe you realize like why, in the end, we put them in the current tier. Maybe in a waste tier. I do believe some of the some of the Embla player will say Embla is used in PvP as well because if in the low tier, I believe Embla is able to one shot the whole team with the seed stack. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. feel free to say it out and sh discuss with us. We are gladly to actually discuss it. And keep note, this tier list is purely PvP. We don't have um, we don't have PvP, PvE elements in this tier list. If you want a PvE one, you can check out the other one. Right. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you guys actually found find this tier list uh, useful for your team building on this like journey. And see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.